just a brief overview of what this next five-year plan is all about to restructure the economy and promote domestic consumption? We're seeing a shift in China. China, as we know, has recently overtaken Japan to be the second largest economy in the world. Yeah. China is now starting to act like a superpower, like an economic superpower, to be more specific. The shift towards domestic consumption uh, is more in line with how the developed first world countries operate. If you look at Germany, it has been the largest exporter mm -hmm. until recently, until China overtook Germany. And they, by and large, Germany has also managed to produce high value added goods and China is trying to do that but more importantly China is also looking to prop up domestic consumption mm -hmm. because they do not want to continue to rely mm -hmm. on cheap imports and it has got lots of right. problems because internationally it causes a lot of resistance against Chinese plans and Chinese goods and uh, China is trying right. to be sensitive to all that. Let's talk about the first thing that they have to do and that's try to prop up the middle class which currently stands at about 157 million people so just over 10 percent of the population constitute the middle class in China. So despite higher growth rates People are not earning what they should be doing. The wages are just a tenth of what they are in Japan. How are they going to address that? On the wages front, we've seen a shift, Lerato. The, the wages have started to increase in China as well. We're starting to see even some of the cheap manufacturing activities moving out of China into countries such as Vietnam mm -hmm. and other cheap labor locations. But on the wages front, there is more that is uh, happening in China and they were seeing a shift there. It's not fair to compare wages in China and Japan. Yeah. We'd rather compare China with other emerging markets, such, such as India, Brazil, and maybe South Africa. We've seen the wages also going up a bit. And to your point about the rising middle class, that also creates a consuming class. And that also unlocks more opportunities for industries such as my industry, the financial services. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, one of the key focus areas in the, in the, in the five-year plan, which is called 12 points, 12 areas of focus, is improving and uh, developing China's financial services right. industry. Let's talk about that a little bit because the focus now is going to be on providing products for insurance, retail banking and also savings plans. I thought that the Asians in general were very good at putting away money for the future. China is not like Japan. The Japanese are very good in saving. China does not have a strong and entrenched savings culture as Japan does, and there's still lots of opportunities, therefore, for companies such as mine <laughs> to be able to tap into the rising middle class, the increasing forecast and orientation towards savings that we are seeing amongst the middle classes, the shift of people from rural areas to urban areas, mm -hmm. becoming part of the ranks of, of the working class and the middle classes. There is a lot of opportunity there. There is a need for a culture of savings to be inculcated in China, and we are seeing much more emphasis by the state mm -hmm. to try and encourage bank, people to have access to banking services, have access to insurance right. services, and that's where the opportunity uh, is as far as we are concerned. I mean, there's also issues like wholesale banking and corporate finance uh, support. A lot of China's investment drive has been state-led by state-owned enterprises. Does the new plan uh, intend on reversing that and, in, and, Im and improving on private capital and local investment? Uh, part of that is very much ensuring that the private sector plays an increasingly important role. Uh, up to now, the economy has been dominated by state-owned enterprises. We've seen some of the state-owned enterprises going for IPOs, and that trend is going to continue. And we're going to see a shift towards much more uh, active and visible role for the private sector in China. This idea of moving away or reorienting China from export-led growth to value add that you mentioned earlier on means that China is now opening itself up to the idea of more imports and then dealing with these trade imbalances for which it's been so um, lambasted in recent history. How serious are they about it? You know, it's one thing to put it on a plan. How serious are they about it in action? I think they are very serious about it because it's really core to ensuring that the social and political stability in China. China needs to ensure three things to make sure that there's stability going forward. You need very strong economic growth, you need very strong growth and employment, and you also need price stability mm. to avoid a, a risk of some of the protests that we've seen in some other countries. Chinese assets. 
we know that China is a hot spot at the moment. Everybody wants to be doing business with the Chinese or business in China. But how much money goes into Chinese equities by way of capital inflows? It seems that the focus tends to be on Hong Kong as opposed to mainland China. It has largely been on Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is seen as a launch pad into mainland China. And over time, we're going to see a shift from companies just basing themselves or, or investing in Hong Kong going into the mainland because that's where the action is and that's where the opportunities mm -hmm. are going forward. And that's going to change. How is the rest of the world going to benefit from this restructuring of the Chinese economy, particularly the emphasis on the Chinese consumer? Um, is it going to be a good thing for uh, emerging economies such as the ones you find in Africa? Is it going to prop up more demand for African products into China? Or is it going to have a reverse effect where the Chinese start to sell to the Chinese and uh, creating a bit of a saturated market for competition? I think for the rest of the world, if the, the forces of the Chinese domestic economy are developed and matured and unleashed, I think the rest of the world stands to benefit. It's a market of 1.3 billion people with a GDP of about 5 trillion US dollars, projected to be around 8 trillion US dollars around 2014. We're seeing a rise in the GDP per capita. So it, it has to be good. As far as I see it, it's China moving from being sort of special to being normal, <laughs> or to be more extreme, from being abnormal to being normal. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very exciting trend right. for the rest of the world economy.